This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to get the manuals out and we're going to tune some duplexers. We now think maybe the duplexer is the problem, but is it? Stay tuned as we take a look at part three in our Troubleshooting the Repeater series. That's what's coming up this week on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, here we are again in part three. We replaced the antenna with a better antenna. We replaced the cabling between the antenna and the duplexers with hardline, and it still didn't fix our problem. And as those of you that have been following along, you've probably maybe you've come to the conclusion of what the problem is, but I'm betting for many of you, it's going to be a surprise here at the end. Now, this video is a little bit longer, but we encourage you to stay in because we're going to show you tuning a duplexer coming up in a bit. Now, what we're doing here is putting the harness back on our original duplexers. We thought maybe there was cabling bad in the harness here on the duplexers, and that didn't fix the problem. We, we replaced this harness with another one, and uh, it didn't fix it. So, KD6 FTR is putting the original harness back on, and then we're going to rehook everything back up, which it didn't fix anything. So we're still, uh, the receive side of our repeater is just getting just hammered, and we're not getting any good uh, audio coming in. It transmits just fine, and as I uh, summarized in the last video, but for those of you that didn't hear about it, the transmit of the repeater is fine. In fact, we're getting out really well. And if you come in on Echolink, All-Star, DMR, or if you use our remote sites that utilize a 220 link back to the repeater through the voting system, all of that audio is fine on receive. It's just coming in directly to the repeater that seems to be at issue. So we have a spare set of duplexers back at the shop, and we thought well, that, that would make a really good video. We could show folks how you can tune duplexers. Now, there's the real proper professional way to do it with a spectrum analyzer and a service monitor to inject a tone. We're going to show you half of that. We don't have a working spectrum analyzer, but we are going to substitute a nano VNA at the very end to kind of kind of show it. But we are going to show you that it is possible to tune your duplexers without real fancy equipment. Well, at least part of the fancy equipment. Again, we are going to use a service monitor to inject a tone. So we'll show you that coming up here in just a couple of minutes. So in what we're buttoning up here is just making sure the original duplexers are hooked back up and that we have the uh, repeater back online for all of the inputs except direct. So Mike is just double checking his work, making sure the receive and the transmit cables are connected. Now, this is another set of duplexers that uh, we happen to have, and we are going to tune these. Now, these were originally tuned at 146.790 uh, for the transmit and 147.190 for the input or the receive side. You can see we've got a different set or a different harness on these, and what we're going to do is we're going to tune these duplexers for the 146 .880 for transmit and 146.280 for the incoming signal or receive signal. So we don't have to come up very much with these duplexers. Now, many of you have probably seen the knobs on top and so forth, and uh, we're going to explain a little bit of that as we go. I do have the audio turned down here because we had a radio in the background. We didn't want to have a content match. But you can see Don has already put arrows on the tops of those uh, dials, if you will, the screws on the top to show original orientation. And then we're going to use those blue arrows as we move those dials back and forth, clockwise and counterclockwise, as we begin to tune these cans. We are going to use a service monitor, which Don is looking at and fiddling with a little bit there. And you can just see it peeking out from the middle right in the blue uh, display. We also have a Kenwood radio that we're going to use on both 146.280 and 146.880. Uh, and right. we will be injecting a uh, tone into the radio. 
So Don is letting us know at this point how we're feeding from the service monitor. You can see the thinner cable top right there coming into the first cavity. And then we have the output of that T connector going to the radio. And what Don is doing is he's he's already set up the frequency for 146.280 because we're on the input cavity. And he's going to adjust the voltage of that tone. And uh, we're seeing where the can is currently. And then he's going to adjust the knob on top, the screw on top. And when the signal or the tone goes away, he's off frequency. When he adjusts that screw on top to hear the tone, he's back on frequency. So you can hear that tone in the background. So at this point, what he's going to do is he's going to go forward, backwards and forwards with that screw to find out where the midpoint is for that tone on the current voltage that's being sent out by the service monitor. Right now, it's on a very a relatively high voltage just to make sure we can hear it. And then as you adjust the screw on top, you'll hear it get clearer and then more static as it goes back and forth. And then he reduces the power so he can... So he can this little... Collar nut, Lock nut. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I've got him turned down, and, and this tone is, a, what is it, a one kilohertz tone, I think, somewhere in that ballpark. But you can hear it's pretty clear. And as he starts adjusting the screw, it's going to become clear, and then staticky, clear, and staticky. And then he's going to reduce the voltage, and he's going to dial it in. So see, he screwed it too far, so now it's not on frequency. Screw the other way, it's back on frequency until it's off of frequency, and then you just got to cut it in half. How many turns, and then cut it in half? The great part about this kind of a work day is we also have some, some newer members with us today, and Don is really patient in explaining what it is he's trying to accomplish here. And uh, that's what makes mentoring and being an Elmer in our hobby so valuable is you can pass this knowledge down to others. Now, Don is not doing this just off, off his memory, although I think he could do it off memory. We actually have a manual on how to tune duplexers, and we're utilizing that and referencing that as we go through this testing. Right now, we're just on one cavity. There's four of these, and what we're trying to do is make sure that we can tune it on one cavity, and then we'll move to the others. So we need to adjust that knob again, because you're right, almost right in the middle. Yeah. Other way. So Don's going to come back the other way, and we should hear that tone here in just a couple of moments. There it is. We're back. So we're really close to the frequency. We might, we might not be right in the middle, but we can hear it. And again, this is on a relatively high voltage. Now he's counting his turns. And then you split the difference. Now he's going to reduce his voltage even further and this forces you to fine tune as best you can with the with the screws here uh, to find where that middle point is. Up the voltage just a smidgen here. There it is. Now we just had to find the midpoint on either side, or the extreme on either side, and then find the midpoint. And he's watching the arrow, the tape that he put on top, to get an idea of how many turns, and then split the difference. So you found the midway point between high and low on that frequency, didn't you, yeah. Don? All right, now, next. And now we move on to the other side. Signal. So now we start coming down with, with the 1.1 microvolts. 1.1 microvolts? Yeah. That's one thousandth of a volt. Mm -hmm. Now we're down to 
All right, clear it clear up again. One point five eight, get more noisy. Six. She's dead, Jim. He wants to, we're on the <laughs> threshold, see, so it's, that's, it's, it's almost there. Yeah. One and a half turns on up, which raised it on up. So, all right. Come down. All right, see. Now, if you started reducing much younger, well, when you, you get used to joke around, around and, I, it to and I said you're probably kid, better so. off calling me pops <laughs> than kid. When you're 81, you're a kid. <laughs> That's the wrong one. This one. All right. See, at a certain point, it starts going the other other direction. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. When you you're younger, you don't like people calling you kid. Yeah. Starts going the other way. You get to act more like a kid. You don't care what people think, so you just do what you want. To do. Tell them, I just tell them who they are. So the best practice here, we're doing each one individually. See, yeah. And then, and then eventually. What, then what we would do then after that, like I said, Do you want to back. snug these up yet? Or no? Uh, no, no. Just don't, don't, don't. I won't touch those. Don't teach t them, as we say. Don't touch. <laughs> Keep your... Mix. Cotton pit, get get off. Cotton these off picking of fingers off of there. It wouldn't be much. It wouldn't take much there. You know. Knock it out. Yeah. Knock I'm not it touching off. those. Okay. okay, so they're both loose. You're okay. all you're all ready to go. Now on. what we got to do now we got to change frequency because we yep. want to go to eight eight zero. Yep. Right. So what we do we just here. All right, let's set this thing up. One forty six point eight eight zero. There we are. Okay. Now. You want me to no, you're fine. We can't do nothing here because we're not there. So you're now we're going to frequency. We go up to 880 here. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So at this point, he's now on the one 146.88 side of the uh, cavities, the first one. And what he's doing is he's reducing the voltage again on the service monitor so it takes an even weaker signal to come through the cavity. And he's using the screw on top again to find the very top and the very bottom of what's being allowed through the cavity. And then he splits it in half. And when you hear the tone, it's closer to being on frequency. And obviously when it's not being played, the radio is not picking up the tone. So again, what's playing the tone is the Kenwood radio. Now he's found the bottom end and the top end, and he's going to go halfway. Now, again, you can use a spectrum analyzer as well, and it'll be more precise than what we're doing, but we didn't have access to one, and we wanted to try out these du duplexers to see if the ones up at the repeater site were at fault, and that's why maybe the receive was getting hurt. So first cavity is almost dialed in at this point. Sometimes Don has the micro voltage down so low that it's not passing through, and there's a little bit of loss even in the cavities themselves. I'm fine, but oh, they're not. I mean, I was a little uncomfortable. The they're higher up. I think they're perfect. This is like three and a half miles. Yeah, I think he's at the bottom now. He's at the top now. He splits the difference, or basically in half. And that cavity is essentially tuned good enough for our purposes. So at this point, we'll move to the other cavity. So you'll notice we're doing one cavity at a time for the input frequency and for the output frequency. And as we'll see in a couple of minutes, then we'll pair them back up. You'll use two, one for input, one for output. You could reverse where those connections are. 
because you just got a piece. Again, we're doing the last cavity on its own, again, one at a time, and then we'll put them back into being used in pairs. One on each side, so you'd have an in here. So just as a quick summary, we've got the cavities hooked up one at a time. We have a service monitor injecting a signal with very low voltage uh, to find out, uh, to get the cavities tuned. And we use a screw on top, loosen the nut, uh, the lock nut, loosen that nut, and then use the screws to tune it to the frequencies that we need. So we're just finalizing this final cavity, and then we're going to do them in pairs. Again, it's not as precise as using a spectrum analyzer, but we didn't have one available. But this would be kind of like a poor man's way of doing it. And if a club, even if you didn't have a spectrum analyzer, but you had an extra pair of cans, this is a method for getting them pretty, pretty close. But now we're taking in the loss factor, which is by the manual school, I guess it's right at 1.5 microvolts. Loss. And Don's explaining here that even the cans introduce some loss. So you have to expect that. Yeah. So by the time, as far as the microvolts is coming out of the service monitor, we're right at that threshold of it, we can't go any lower because the cans themselves become the attenuating factor. And he's also showing one of our members here the uh, documentation for how to do the tuning itself. Again, Don's knowledge base is extensive and the paperwork. It's not all in his head, but boy, does he have a lot. There we're Don, at 50 ohms, uh, 0.112 microvolts is negative 126.005339, whatever, dBm. That's... So again, what Don has shown with the service monitor is that he's got it down to just a tiny fractions of microvolt uh, to come through the cans with that tone. And that means they're, they're essentially very sensitively tuned, even by just using the audio. We only have one receiver. We've done it the other way. Normally it's say that you put the signal into here, feed it back, feed it backwards, and so it was like that. Okay. And then you would have actually have receiver one, well, receiver two, see, the and so forth. But yet, no, there's other ways like we done here, so we have to tune each one of these separately. Hatch, so so now, what we want Which to do Which one do you want to do first? Well, what, what we want to do is... is Where do you uh, want this hooked up? Yeah, I want that put on there. Oh. And the radio put up here. We'll back feed it in there. And that's the low side, so see what source. We'll check the low side and see see what the see what the low so side is. So this would be I feel like the antenna, right? No, this is the this Yeah, this is the from the antenna. This the radio. Yeah. So this is where the signal's coming from, right? right. It's coming from the service monitor. Right. And then this is the Which radio. we're saying is coming from the antenna. So this is like this is going to the receiver. Yep. Yeah. Other jumper. Oof, I am so Okay now service what I monitor. want you to do is put that on that other one over there. And behind yeah. Brian there, there's a couple of dummy loads. You didn't specify. This he used one of these at work a lot. Dummy this load. particular one here, yeah. I don't even know if see, so what we're doing right here, right now, see what we're doing here is, is like I said. Like, Brian like, wants to see this for the camera. Like you see here. See your generator signal comes in here, so it's going both directions. Yep. So then you put a 50 ohm dummy load on this one up here, whichever one you're. So since we're not, whichever since this, this is the one we're testing first here, so we'll put the dummy load down on this one down here. So it doesn't really Got make it. any difference. The radio is on this one here. So now what we should receive is the 146880. Okay. Right. Okay. So you already see we're going to point going through both sets of cans. We already received them. So. I don't know, Don. I don't think it's tuned well enough. I think we need is. to bring it down to like well, 0 0.7, 0 0.075. We don't know that we, know that we can. <laughs> if I could get that thing okay. ever to work again, well, we could do it even better. So. My, uh, well, I, know, I wouldn't want to hook my uh, nano VNA up to the service monitor because I don't know what it would do to the nano VNA. It might, that signal, even though it's as low as it is, could potentially cause me a problem.
just barely over one turn, see? Mm -hmm. So we go back to there, so. Okay, we're gonna snug that up. Man, I can see the value of this, but at the same time, if you didn't have this spectrum analyzer, you can do this. Well, so they also make service monitors that have a VNA mm -hmm. built into it. Mm -hmm. So right. you can have, you can be doing all of this right. and watching the Three numbers and adjusting the output power and see the, on the scope. So when, when he's done done, I'll bring my nano VNA over it and we'll hook it up like this to watch it, to look at the, the signal. Remember how we looked at it? What I'm getting at though is that for a lot of clubs that don't have that kind of equipment, right. what we're doing is the poor now man's way of doing it that works. And we just, we just barely drop it at a .14. So, oh hey, wow. We're good. Tighten it down right there. It's right on the threshold at .14 microvolts. Look at I touch it. It, 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 it's going to drop in and out because oh, it's on, right the on the threshold. It's on the threshold. Right on the razor edge. How tight edge. do you... Just, just snug. Because we don't want somebody to bump it, you know, and be yes. able to turn it. I just tried to see how... Okay. okay, that's snugger than I made it. All right, so now... Okay, that's in there. Let me see. This one's tight already? Yeah, Don did that one already. Right there. That was really, right. really tight. Point three one microvolts. You're almost... You're full quieting. Right. Yeah. We're good to go. So. Okay, so now... So now, Don, we're going to flip flop these two. You're going to reverse them. Yes, sir. You're going to stick that <laughs> Poor <laughs> thing, don't dummy load. Give calling them names. Don't have no intelligence. It's just dummy load. It identifies as a dummy load. There. We are in like Flynn. All right, here we go. Now we got to redo it to 280. 46.280. Have you got something running? All right. I want 280. Yep. I just keep going around. What's he it. doing? Changing his frequency? I can't even adjust my radio. There we go. Change it to 046280. Which is? Uh, the input uh, transmit. Though it's the receive side of the repeater. Oh, okay. That's the input to the repeater. Yeah. Now it's already up at, comes in at point. One five zero eight, right there. Already, it's almost right on there. You can already see. It's going to be so quick. All right, so here we go. Like, so take a reference point, go down. Oh, you're only three quarters of a turn. Turn, okay. So you cut it all the way back to the original, right? Dead. Comes in right there. Comes in right there. Uh huh. One turn. So imagine two, three. Maybe this way would be right. Two right, so and about, about one and a three quarter. Quarters. About one and a quarter. Got and it. if it's big, it All right. takes longer to do it. One. And then about right there would be about right there. So on the money. Well, he's doing okay. it. Without, without spectrum doing it. But you have the spectrum. You know, it might just so it take, the, maybe just a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey. Yeah, this is the poor man's way to do it, and this works great. Right. And as long as it works, it works. Yeah. So it's still it's the same. Point four, one, four. When you hit the one four, so you still you're gonna check yeah. this one again too, right? So I said, here we go. We'll go down. So like half a turn. No, just wait a minute. Let's see. I'm getting right there. So oh, no, it's right there. It's in solid now. All right. One turn, two turns, three turns roughly. So we go one turn and one half. Okay. And what microvolt are we sitting at now, Don? 1.4? 1. 1. 1.5? Well, microvolts. There's point one four one and just well, hold it right on the threshold. That's same as this other same one. as the other one. Yeah. That's three hundred. There it is on. One forty six. It was close. Point eight eight zero. Weird. Push that one. Get it right here in a minute. Yeah, we didn't want one hundred forty seven kilohertz. Go so now <laughs> VLF. Now you see what we got here. Now we got a one forty six two eight zero. So now you just take this thing like this. Oh, you and you see. kick the power up to see where it That's, engages. Yeah. See, see where it's got to go. And what's the what's the rejection level supposed to be on these two guys? What's the uh, the reading? So already up to ten microvolts. So we're so up getting up signal strength now. Well, it's already rejected. Holy cow! When you we, we got a tone, right? Jesus, 
Yeah, we're at like over 200 microvolts, so that's now we're over half a volt. Let's think about it differently. We yeah, he's over a full volt. millivolts now. Oh, sorry, in millivolts. When we yeah, you're transmit, right. we're transmitting in a different frequency than we're receiving, right? Right. So How much signal I got to put in the thing before I can prove it to you that this is rejecting that one versus eight over? Uh, I think you need to go up to a half like, a volt. Like two <laughs> a I don't know what's a rejection oh, yeah, yeah. spec on this. And, and it's up as high as it goes. 223.6 millivolts. So we're talking and point almost a quarter of a volt. The and this thing yeah. here, just under that. There's this thing uh, here is on. That, when he's doing those knobs uh, on the top, they're changing them on the bottom. No, it's, when he it's does the there. Top, oh, the if you go and open the, the scrunch and you can't hear the tone, we're rejected. So anything that I can put out here, I cannot inject through this section here and make it receive it. Okay, so over here. So question, so, Don. Hmm? If I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. now with it set like it is, uh -huh. if we flip flop these right now, this is going to hear it, right? Yeah. Well, no, this is on two eight still. Yeah. Okay. Even in spite of that thing, if you put put the so see, you got the input coming in here, uh -huh. so it's going both ways. It goes so both ways. So if you ways. change them to yeah, it would probably ride over. See, because once again, because you've got these what? are allowing you've got the dB eight rejection eight. here, mm -hmm. which is 1.5 dB on the like I said, the rejection yeah. that yeah. was normally there. Plus, you look at the radio specs, and it may have 50 or 60 dB rejection cells. Got so it. you take you take like I said on that one other one, and it said 93 dBs, and if you got 63 more, that makes you 150 something dB rejection. A, a strong signal, you got to be sitting on there with a thousand watts right next door to it to even break through so, the thing. Okay, so, okay, so you know, this, this is the 8.8, eight, this is the 2.8 side. Yeah. Received. So, so the reason you're on 2.8 right. and we're blasting 146.88 yeah. in. Eight, eight, I'm, I'm trying to force a 146.880 eight, eight, oh frequency through these. Got it. These so can, now these we'll, flip flop, we'll flip flop it and, and make sure that the rejection is. So basically, we'll set yeah, this to 88 to 28, yeah, and, see, and, and, and see, reverse and these see two. And it'll do the same thing. So okay. There's a small fee for paper viewing. I'm the holder. Yes, you are. Holder. You are. You are no. That means you get to charge people if we want to look at it. Oh, I will charge you by telling me something I don't know. Tell you something you don't know. All right. My youngest are. child All was right, born now. on January 29th. <laughs> this is not what I had in mind. So now we're going to change, you didn't know. change the frequency on the radio, <laughs> Don. To 146.88. Okay, so now we're on the 880. So now, then what we want to do here is uh, uh, come up with. Uh, yeah, we're on the 88, so that should be 28, right? Well, we want 88 over here. And we'll, we'll put and two, that's 28 up here. Yeah. We just flip these two. Yeah. The radio's on 88, and the I'm service monitor will be on 28. And we're going to try to override the 28 signal into the 88 side. We're going to look and see if these guys are rejecting yeah. right, like they're supposed to. There's that tone. Okay. And okay. We're dead on. Full it's, scale. It's putting up. Well, it's on a bazillion volts, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I've got the, the, not the 890 the micro volts. I've got the big going. Yeah, so I'm ready for you guys to start sending me stuff. <laughs> Whoops, it's, it's gone. Okay. <laughs> it's working. All right. We're already starting off at uh, 890.2 microvolts. We're even out of the millivolts. We're way on up there, you know. So. There we go. Uh -huh. So he can eat them. But I missed the bacon. It, they taste a little better with the bacon. But they're, they're okay with the smoke. That's the max. Right, so so we're still not getting any. Since we're, we're not going to need to do that. It is How, not so to alive. tune this, mm -hmm. we loosen it's that, familiar. and this and little piece, does it just slide up and down? Yeah. Just, or is there, is it on threads <laughs> inside? Because <laughs> no, no, this just, looks it, like it, a it collar. Just, it just slides like up and down. Okay, so this piece that is attached to the SO239, and then we have a little adjuster that changes I'll have, to, I'll have to sit how because that's on the back page here how we how we go about sitting this so then what we, we do we'll pay we will we will put a frequency in there you can use the repeater and and then once we once we put that in there then we we'll get it for that the patties and the links we always get Excuse me. <laughs> uh, right here, see. Mike's fault. It's all, always my fault. <laughs> right here. I found some. See, this is your reject. Yep. Okay. And so what this got to do? That's that's where you just these here, right? A and B, and so forth, and and C and D on the other side. 
So now, is there a chance we don't have to adjust them at all? Yeah. Well, yeah. Because we've already run the test and it's not it's bleeding already, over. They're already. I guarantee you now they're already closed. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You know, so. So over that little bit of time there, you've been able to see how we can tune duplexers with just a service monitor, a radio, and a dummy load. And this picture shows the orientation of the screws on top uh, once we were finished with all of the t uh, tone base tuning. Again, without the aid of a spectrum analyzer, we're not saying you shouldn't use one. We just didn't have access to one, and we wanted to swap out the duplexers up at the site with this set to see if that fixed our problem. The thing I'm trying to get to is, there we go. So that is one four, it says 146.48. There's 8.8. So that's that's what it's showing. Okay. I don't know why that's showing 4A, but because we are connected to this side, which is two eight. the 2 8 side. Ah, I don't get it. I don't, I it don't could understand. be it's just not that. I don't think I have this accurate. set up right to look at it. But, but we're seeing something. Yeah. We should see the double dip. Is so what Don, here's getting. the end. So it's at this point we're going to go swap out the duplexers. And so Mike is going to go ahead and disconnect the original cans um, or duplexers. You can see these are larger. These are the six inches uh, versus, uh, or maybe those are the eights, I can't remember. But these are a larger set, and we're going to then put in the smaller set that we've just recently tuned up. So we're suspecting the duplexers are the problem because, again, we're having a problem with the receive only, not on the transmit side. So we are suspecting the duplexers are at fault, or at least we. This is the next uh, component in the line uh, between the antenna and the repeater itself. So Mike's going to go ahead and, and put this uh, uh, different set of duplexers in line. We've got to connect our receive, and we also need to connect our transmit and then run a test. Now remember, folks, we're just substituting at this point, putting in what we think to be a known good unit and uh, see if it uh, makes any difference on the receive side of our repeater problems. And it should also be said at this point as well that anytime you're taking the duplexers in and out that you need to make sure that the repeater is completely powered off. Uh, in our case, we have AC power going into the repeater and DC power for backup. So both sources of power have been disconnected from the repeater so that there's not even the potential that uh, we're going to be sending RF uh, to a non-attached uh, repeater. Alrighty, so we're reattaching the DC power, the backup power, and I'm going to click the button on the front for the AC power. Technically, we didn't need to connect the AC or turn that on just to test the repeater, and the repeater is going to ID. So there was the ID. Of course, no problem on the transmit side, but now we gotta we gotta see if the receive's going to work. Uh, nothing but kerchunk on that last go around. Still just Kerchuk, Don, if that was you, KD6FTR. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So, the next thing that we have not replaced is the amplifier. But the receive doesn't impact that. I'd say, I thought it would ID. DM KD six FTR. 
Was that on the 88 or the 103? Well, I'm on 88, correct? Because we're here. I don't need to go somewhere else to see. Okay, so we're doing a quick test of something. The uh, original cans are back in place, but we have bypassed the amplifier. So I think it's putting out whatever it is, 5 watts right now. Are you on the 88 input or are you on the uh, Wayne County? I don't know if we've uh, determined anything by doing this necessarily, but the amplifier is not in the pack and not in the path, and you're hearing me. Can I'm hearing you. Are you hearing me? I'm coming uh, back to you and uh, here. Yeah, you're solid, loud and clear, like it's supposed to sound. All right, let me do that. I'll, I'll call you back in a sec. KD6FTR. I was like, I couldn't get it to go because it was working. Your signal strength is dropped from the uh, full scale on the repeater down to uh, almost half scale because of the, uh, probably the one that happens to the antenna system. All right. Mm. Oh, no, I don't need it there. Come back. Medium? Alright, AC40M, KD6FTR. Just confirming that 20 watts was the mid power. Okay, I'm confirming back to you uh, that it is the mid power 20, and then the next one is 50. We cannot run now. 50 watts are going to run too hot. So, let's leave it on, on the 20 for right now. Um, it is almost it, it is flashing on the full scale mark, so that's, uh, that's working fine. Go ahead. So it's at this point we figured out our problem. We have a bad cable, possibly, uh, and it is allowing RF to fill the cabinet, which is overwhelming the receive side of the repeater, or the amplifier itself is putting out um, uh, transmitting frequencies other than 146.880, and if it's transmitting on 280 or close enough to 280, it's going to swamp the receive side of the repeater as well. We don't know which it is, but we do know when the amplifier is in line that it is causing our problem. And at this point, we were able to do some further testing and the repeater is acting its normal self. We were really happy uh, with finally figuring out what was causing the problem and we would not have suspected the amplifier. That's why it was the last thing that we checked. You can see here in the picture with Mike testing that we've got the original cans back in place. We didn't need the ones that we had done a quick tune job on, so we put the original ones back in place. I drove back down to my property, which is over 50 miles away, and was able to get into the repeater, fully copyable and so forth, and it's a, that's even at 20 watts without the aid of the amplifier. So next steps would be to pull the amplifier out and send it off for repair or for further analysis. One of the philosophies about troubleshooting is you learn more about your system when things don't work correctly. And that's one of the things we've learned a lot during this journey of fixing the repeater, to repair the repeater, to get it to participating as we would expect it to. We depend on this repeater weekly for two nets as well as just for communications in general throughout the week. And so when it's not working correctly, um, without the aid of the remote sites, we would have been down very, very hard. Um, now that we've isolated the problem, we can move forward. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4, BDP Brian. We hope you've liked this uh, Troubleshooting the Repeater series. And if you have any comments or suggestions, any questions, please put those down in the uh, comments down below the description. And we'll take a look at those and, and try to answer as many as we can. We couldn't show everything that was done, but we tried to show you a lot of what went into trying to figure out what was wrong with our setup. And again, it helps many of our members to see all of the steps that we went through to finally come up with an answer. We hope you had a great time watching this series. Take care and 73.